Number 14 then from the 2017 advanced tyre. Here we go, 10 marks for your second order differential equation. All the way through to the particular solution because you've got these initial values. A wee scary bit here maybe. You certainly don't want this trig expression if it's going to clash with that one. That would be a real pest. Well, let's just see what happens first of all. What do we have for the auxiliary equation? Well, taking the coefficients m squared minus 6m plus 9 equals 0. That's fine because that's a perfect square, which isn't fine in a sense. Because that's just going to go down to m minus 3 squared is 0. Or you could have it in the two parts, but the important bit is here you've got a repeated root. You've got m equals 3, which is a repeated root. So when you get the complementary function, which must be made of two bits for a second order one, whereas you can have e to the 3x for one solution, you can't have e to the 3x again because that's not independent. The second one would be multiplied by x to get an independent solution. And then you can have some of them and some of them added together will still be a solution. So there's the first part. What's the complementary function? And there's the solution to the auxiliary equation which provided it. Put those two bits together if you like. Now, what about the particular integral? What could form this? Well, you can see straight away. Sines and cosines. So I've used A and B, so I think I'll go for C. So C lots of sine x, and there's no clash, plus D lots of cos x should do for this. Now I'll need to differentiate that twice so you can feed it back into this and compare it. So dy by dx would be, but at least you don't have x times it, so these terms are just going to flip between themselves. So it'll be c cos x, but that'll be minus d sine x. And the second derivative will be, they're just going to switch over again, aren't they? Minus c sine x, and I'll have to stay minus d cos x. Now you need to feed this back into this to equate it to this side. Now you could use a big long line for that. I think I'll just take a note of what I need. And I'm just going to feed it in in a convenient form. For instance, I just want one of these. Middle one, I want to take off six of those. And for the first one, I want nine of those. That's what would form it. I'll have nine of them. Take away six of them and give me one of them. And that will make this. And that should equal this. So, since that's going to be in two parts, which is 8, a sine part, and a cosine part, this part should tidy up just to two parts. There'll be a certain number of sine x, and there'll be a certain number of cos x, which I can just get from here rather than spreading out all over the place. So where's all my sine x's? Well, I'm going to have 9c, minus minus is plus 6d, and then back to sine x again here is minus c. What about the cos x's? Well, I've got 9d, and this part I've got minus 6c, and this part for cos I've got, whoops, minus d. So I can tidy that up. This side should equal that side. So that means looking at the sine x terms, I have 8 c plus 6d should equal 8. Maybe we'll just tidy that up a wee bit more. 4c plus 3d should equal 4. There's an equation. And then looking at the cos x terms, I've got 8d minus 6c should equal 19. Well, I'll just have to pop it up here. It should go down here. Well, unfortunately, you can't just get rid of one of them straight away, but I could do the C's by adding them, but I would have to have three of them and two of them. So I'm going to have to do three of one and two of two. What's that going to produce? Well, the C's will disappear if you do that. So how many D's have I got? So if I've got three of them, that's nine. And if I've got two of them, that's another 16. That's 25. So, whoops, a daisy. 25d equals, but I've got to do the same over here now. So I want three of them, which is 12, two of them, which is 38, and that makes 50. Oh, that worked out quite nice. So 25d is 50, so d equals 2. Now I can just go back to number 1. So from number 1, 4c plus, and it's three of them, so it's three twos are 6, should equal 4. 
So 4c equals negative 2, so c equals negative a half. Which means, not very well set out this is it, which means that for the particular integral it's y equals, no, make sure you get the right ones with the right ones, I had c is the sine, so it's negative a half sine x. d was with the cos, so plus 2 cos x for the particular integral. Now you have to put these two parts together to get the general solution. So, so creating a bit of room, there's the general solution made up of the two parts. You've got the complementary function and the particular integral. Now to get the particular solution, you need to put in the initial values. So subject to those initial values, and you could of course combine that into one expression if you like, a plus bx times e to the 3x. A, if x is 0, y should be 7. So, make all the x's 0, so that's e to the 0, plus, well that term's going to disappear with x being a 0, plus 2 cos 0 minus a half, and I know a half sign 0, but it's not as immediately obvious as a multiplying 0. Right, so what am I left with? Well, cos of 0 is 1, sine of 0 is 0, so that just says you've got 7 equals, and e to the 0 is 1, a plus 2. That means that a is 5. That's simplified it a bit. So now the equation reads y equals 5e e to the 3x plus bx e to the 3x plus 2 cos x minus a half sine x. I just put that half sine x at the end because it'll be negative on it. Now to use this value of a half you need to differentiate it. So dy by dx will be, so that first one's going to become 15 e to the 3x multiplied by 3. This unfortunately is a product. So I'll have b e to the 3x plus and then 3 bx e to the 3x. That's leaving the bx and differentiating e to the 3x, which then puts a 3 at the front. Minus 2 sine x, because cos goes to negative sine, minus a half cos x. Now putting this in, when x is 0, the derivative should be a half. So replace all the x's with halves. So that's 15e e to the 0 plus b e to the 0, that disappears, minus 2 sine, yes I know, 0, minus a half cos 0 e to the 0 is 1, cos of 0 is 1, sine of 0 is 0. So I've got a half equals 15 plus b, that's gone, minus a half. That half can join that half to make 1, and then b will be 1, take away the 15, which means b equals negative 14. And that's you there then. Now just put it all together for the particular solution. y equaled 5e to the 3x minus 14x e to the 3x plus 2 cos x minus a half sin x. Well, you could join them together. Like that. So there we go, hopefully you got that if you were just careful with your numbers going through it all.